Golf enthusiasts, have you ever wondered about the meteoric rise and mysterious disappearance of a once dazzling star? In the early 2000s, a name blazed across the golfing world like a comet, Natalie Gulbis. Picture this, a rising star with undeniable charisma, captivating audiences worldwide and making waves both on and off the course. But what happened to Natalie Gulbis? Join us on a journey into the enigmatic tale of triumph, controversy, and the shadows that eventually cast her into the periphery. Stay tuned as we explore the highs, the lows, and the ultimate question, what actually happened to Natalie Gulbis? But before we delve deeper into Natalie Gulbis's extraordinary journey, don't forget, hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and give us a thumbs up. Let's swing into the captivating world of Natalie Gulbis together and let the golfing journey begin. The Prodigy's Origins In the heart of Sacramento, California, Natalie Gulbis emerged as a golf prodigy, born into a family where the game wasn't just a sport, but a way of life. Natalie's journey began at the age of four when she picked up golf clubs scattered around their home, kindling a passion that would evolve into a remarkable career. By the age of seven, she wasn't just swinging clubs. She was winning tournaments, a remarkable feat that set the stage for her meteoric rise. At 10, Natalie showcased a mastery that left seasoned players in awe. While most casual golfers spend their entire lives chasing the elusive goal of breaking par, Natalie was already achieving that at the tender age of 10. A golfing prodigy, she embarked on her maiden voyage into professional golf at 14, appearing as an amateur in her first LPGA Tour event. Armed with a handicap of two, she embarked on a journey that would soon captivate audiences worldwide. Natalie's academic path took her to Granite Bay High School, where she quickly rose to the pinnacle of the golfing hierarchy. Here's the twist. Her school didn't have a girls' golf team. Undeterred, Natalie joined the boys' golf team, setting herself apart as the top player. Playing with the boys not only honed Natalie's skills, but instilled in her a fierce competitive spirit. At 16, she graduated high school with her sights firmly set on the next chapter of her golfing journey, collegiate golf. Natalie accepted a scholarship to Arizona State University, renowned for its formidable golf program catering to both men and women. Here, she found herself on the same team with fellow freshman Lorena Ochoa, a name that would later become synonymous with golf greatness. Natalie Gulbis, born on the 7th of January, 1983, was not just a rising star. She was a prodigy destined for greatness. From her early triumphs to joining the boys golf team and earning a spot in collegiate golf, Natalie's journey was already an extraordinary tailor. Triumphs on the green Natalie's debut on the illustrious LPGA Tour in 2002 marked the beginning of a journey that would test her resolve and determination in the most demanding sport. Despite the sky-high expectations that surrounded her, a victory on tour eluded her grasp until her sixth season. In her fourth season on the LPGA Tour, she finished a remarkable sixth on the money list, amassing over $1 million in earnings. From the 2005 LPGA Championship, to the 2006 Kraft Nabisco Championship, she displayed unwavering consistency by placing in the top 10 in four consecutive majors. But the moment that would forever define Natalie Gulbis's professional career arrived in 2007 at the picturesque Avian Masters in France. In a dramatic playoff against the formidable Zheng Zheng, Natalie showcased nerves of steel. With the world watching, she calmly tapped in for a two-putt birdie on the first extra hole, claiming the winner's prize of $450,000. It was a watershed moment that solidified her place among the LPGA's elite and silenced any doubts about her ability to win on the biggest stage. Beyond individual triumphs, Natalie also made her mark as a team player, contributing to three Victoria Solheim Cup teams in 2005, 2007, and 2009. However, as Natalie soared to new heights in the golfing world, she was simultaneously facing challenges that would test her both physically and mentally. Battle on two fronts. Natalie's aggressive playing style, relentlessly pursuing the ball with strength and determination, 
took a toll on her body, leading to persistent back injuries. By the age of 27, Natalie's body had taken a severe toll and her back was in shambles. She even contemplated retiring from the sport in 2010. The solution to Natalie's predicament came from a discectomy, a procedure designed to address her bulging discs. Unfortunately, her initial surgery didn't yield the desired results. Natalie faced an ongoing battle with re-injury, relying on cortisone shots, ice baths, and rigorous physical therapy to manage her pain. Simple tasks like climbing stairs or sitting in a car for an extended period became excruciating challenges. At this stage of her career, Natalie spent more time in the confines of a physical therapy clinic than on the greens, where she could hone her skills. Natalie kept playing while still hurt, but it affected her competitiveness. In a statement, she spoke about how her back issues limited her practice time and kept her from competing on golf courses with deep, rough, and uneven lies. The pain was so much that she spoke with her coach and decided on an early retirement. She said, I can't give my best unless I play regularly. If I can't give my best, I don't want to be out there. I'm a professional athlete. I have pride. However, just before Natalie went through with her plan to retire in 2010, she learned that Peter Jacobson had the same surgery she had undergone with his first proving unsuccessful. So she began contemplating having the surgery done again. Natalie began weighing options with her coach and doctor. While it seemed like a good idea, they pointed out the downside, that she had an 80% chance of success. They said she might not play professional golf anymore, but would live a pain-free life. So Natalie had another surgery at the Laser Spine Institute. It was a success, and she stopped feeling the pain. Contrary to her doctor's predictions, in the years following, Golbus played full seasons, her best coming in 2012, where she had three top 10 finishes, including a T4 at the Avian. However, in 2017, Natalie's back injuries would resurface. Throughout her career, she had to deal with six major surgeries just to ease the pain in her back. Life beyond the greens, as Natalie Gulbis's career progressed with no wins, her battle with injuries persisted, leading her to add up the reduced schedule in 2018 and 2019. Despite her best efforts, she found it nearly impossible to come close to winning any golf event during this time. In 2020, Natalie made the difficult decision to retire from professional golf, marking the end of her career on the greens. But retirement wasn't the end of Natalie Gulbis's story. It was the beginning of a new chapter. In 2013, she married Josh Radimel, a former quarterback for Yale University. Their love endured over the years and they remained happily married. Natalie's involvement in politics also made headlines. In 2016, she delivered a speech at the Republican National Convention expressing her support for Donald Trump. I'm proud to tell you that with Donald's help, I opened up the Natalie Golbus Boys and Girls Club. Her outspoken political stance led to speculation that she might run for the open third congressional district of Nevada as a Republican candidate in 2018. However, in May 2018, President Donald Trump appointed Natalie as a member of his Council on Sports, Fitness and Nutrition, highlighting her continued dedication to promoting health and fitness in the United States. Natalie capitalized on her image by branching into other venues, including her reality TV show, The Natalie Goolby Show. In 2012, she even appeared in the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue, wearing only body paint embracing her identity both on and off the golf course. So there you have it, golf enthusiasts. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the enigmatic story of Natalie Gulbis, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and ring that notification bell. Your support fuels our passion for storytelling. Let us know in the comments if there's another golfer's story you'd like us to cover. Until next time, see you there.